Yeah. 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 Bipartisan consensus in Washington has been that America ought to give amnesty to all illegal aliens within our borders, no matter how many there are. The leadership of both parties believes this. The problem is that voters definitely don't believe it. They strongly disagree and have for decades. They've said so in polling consistently. But instead of paying attention to what the public wants, as usual, the parties ignore it and instead work together to do what they want by stealth. Their latest gambit is called H.R. 5038, a bill called the Farm Workforce Modernization Act of 2019. As usual, the name is Orwellian. The bill does not modernize America's agricultural workforce. In fact, just the opposite. H.R. 5038 is designed to keep our farming practices primitive and dependent upon low-wage manual labor. The bill, which remarkably has a total of 24 Republican co-sponsors, would give amnesty to illegal immigrant farm workers in the United States, pretty much all of them. Even illegal aliens who've been convicted of crimes would be eligible for permanent residency here and eventually citizenship. Beneficiaries would not have to pay any back taxes. They'd qualify even if they skipped court hearings or snuck back into the U.S. after being deported. Don't you try something like that as a U.S. citizen. Congress will have no mercy on you. But for foreign nationals, no problem. How many foreign nationals would benefit from this act if it became law? Well, in point of fact, nobody knows. The pro-amnesty group Farm Worker Justice estimates that at least 1.2 million illegal immigrants would be eligible. But if history is any guide, and it is, the actual number would be far, far higher. And that's assuming the bill would restrict amnesty to actual farm workers. Good luck with that. H.R. 5038 imposes very low document standards. Those applying for amnesty can submit all kinds of different documents. There's no penalty for fraud. In other words, there'd be no reason not to submit a bogus application. And needless to say, many people would, just as they did 30 years ago during the Ronald Reagan amnesty. That supposedly limited farm worker amnesty drew hundreds of thousands of fraudulent applications. And here's the key. Most of them were approved anyway. In some cases, even illegal immigrants who arrived in this country after amnesty became law were allowed to benefit from the amnesty. Think about that for a minute. It was a joke. Now they want to do it again, but on a much larger scale. So to sum up, the Farm Workforce Modernization Act of 2019 would reward lawbreaking, exacerbate the border crisis, and undermine the already stalled wages of American blue-collar workers. It's pretty much the mirror image, the exact opposite of what Donald Trump ran on just three years ago. And yet, Members of Congress like Elise Stefanik, Tom Cole, Fred Upton, and more than 20 other Republicans are now fighting to make it law. Why is that? You've got to wonder. Maybe they're not bright enough to know what's in the bill. Maybe there's some other motive. Maybe someone should ask them. Well, Washington continues to want America's border with Mexico to be as open as possible, even though Mexico itself is quickly falling apart. It's, in effect, a cartel-dominated war zone. This week, three Republican members of Congress sent the Trump administration a letter urging it to follow through with the idea of designated Mexico's cartels as terror organizations. Pete Dabrowska is a congressional candidate from the state of North Carolina. He has called for a 10-year moratorium on all immigration. He joins us tonight. Pete, thanks so much for coming on tonight. When you say all immigration, do you mean all immigration or just all illegal immigration? Sure. So, Tucker, it's important that we define what an immigration moratorium is. And... Uh, in this case, it means no net immigration to the United States. So about 200,000 people leave the United States every year. Yes. Uh, bringing in 200,000 legal aliens would be fine. But bottom line, we would like to have no population increase from legal immigration. Well, you are not allowed to say that. I'm so, So the left has decided, because the left controls the terms that the right uses, as you know, and the right goes along with this. Yep. And you're allowed to say under duress that you're against illegal immigration, but you're never allowed to say that there should be some absolute cap. Why are you saying that? Well, that's, those are the old party rules, Tucker. And I think that there's a new Republican Party in town. It's people like myself who are you know, younger and uh, less controlled by, should we say, the conservative ink crowd or maybe the, uh, the donor class in Washington, D.C. and the political elites. We understand the game. We understand that the Chamber of Commerce has bought and paid for our Congress people, and we understand that it has bought and paid for organizations like Turning Point USA. Uh, we understand it has bought and paid for media outlets uh, like the Daily Wire, for example, who are not meaningfully conservative in any way, who can never be trusted to conserve anything. So, so tell me what I mean. Tell me what your rationale is, though. I mean, they're going to 
attack you probably in on a bunch of different levels for saying this why should people agree with your idea well Tucker I mean when you think about why we the situation that we have economically in America where the working class continues to dwindle legal immigration is not helping us in this scenario so we're bringing in roughly a million legal immigrants a year uh, in various visa programs and uh, via green cards and these folks are increasingly taking jobs not just from working class Americans, you know, like we like we do with the the sort of farm visas, like you were just discussing, yes. uh, but increasingly from middle class Americans too. So we're, I mean, Congress, even Republicans in Congress, supposed conservatives, are lobbying right now to increase high skilled tech visas. Now, imagine being an ordinary American and going to college with the idea that there's upward mobility in society and that you're going to improve your life by going to college and you take on a hundred thousand dollars plus of student debt yes and then you get out and you're competing with a foreigner for a, a computer engineering job and who will work for less and who will work more hours uh, and send but that's the free market we're told well that is and I think that in a lot of senses uh, the free market capitalism of Wall Street is different than the free market capitalism of Main Street. And a conservative vocabulary that does not recognize that difference is obsolete and it deserves to die. Pete, it's great to see you tonight. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. Running for Congress.